So I'm in the woods with Barry and Paul and I've got the Flashpoint Explore 600 Pro with me, otherwise known as the Godox AD600 Pro. And I've got the Pixar Pro Pika 200, also known as the Godox AD200. And uh, we're gonna get some portraits of Barry. So today I'm shooting with the D7000 and the Nikon 50mm 1.4. And I'm also using the Adder Armor Flashpoint, I think it's the R Pro trigger, which is the Godox X Pro. And I've not got it turned on yet. We've got the 600 Pro set up here. The 200 is over there, but it's turned off. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just get my ambient exposure good and see what I need to stop the sky blowing out. Even though we're in the dark woods, we can see the bright sky behind Barry and we don't want that to go pure white. So. And we're actually dialed in pretty good right off the bat. We're at a 2000th at F4 at ISO 100. And we've got, is it a 4 foot Octobox on the AD600 Pro. And now I'm just gonna knock it up to a quarter power and see how it works. What? How did the sky get blown out? Oh, because I've not got height. Right, come closer. So one thing to note, and I keep making this mistake, on the X-Pro trigger, to go into high speed sync, you actually have to hit the sync button because as soon as I put this on, the camera's maximum shutter speed went up to 320th of a second from 2000 and my sky was blown out. So I need to go sync, high speed on. Now our sky's not blown out, but the flash is a lot dimmer. So we're gonna need to whack this all the way up to full power, I think. We might even need to bring it in a lot closer. Oh, that's looking much better. So. We're gonna need to bring it around a lot more though, Paul. Yep. So we'll go move the lights now. All right, so we've moved the light around. I'm having to get down to a bit of a lower angle in order to get the sky in the shot. But you can see, oh God. But you can see we've brought the flash around a lot more in front of him. And we've actually brought it a lot closer as well. It's about half the distance it was now. So we can get a bit more power out of it. We're still at full power and I might knock it down because it's just getting a little bit bright now. But now we're not getting the background blown out. We're getting good light on Barry. And we're gonna try again in the new lighting position. All right, so we've got Barry where we want him. We've got the key light where we want it. We've got the sky at the exposure we need it. We're gonna add the AD200 at the back and see how it looks. The plan was to put the Octobox on the 600 Pro up there and then use the reflector off the 600 on the 200 just to project the light a bit more forward. But if you were thinking of using the 600 reflector on a S-fit bracket, the Godox X-fit bracket, it ain't gonna fit because there's little notches that stick out here that stop it going in all the way. So it isn't gonna twist on. So we're gonna try bevel, see how it goes. And if we're not getting the kind of light we want, we'll swap, swap over to the Fresnel head. So with this being a bare bulb with no reflector, we might lose too much power here, but we're gonna test it and find out anyway. As you can see, Paul's over there just holding up the stand because the ground dips about probably 10 foot compared to where I am here. So Paul's holding it up just below the branches. And we're gonna get Barry back on the log. Thanks Barry. <laughs> and we're gonna give it another go and see how the rim looks. Right, so you can see now that we've moved up into the field and it's really kind of bright up here, hold on. Yeah, so you can see it's, it's quite bright out here in the field. So we're gonna shoot out here now because these clouds are looking really amazing. I know you can't see them because they're all blown out. We're gonna see if the AD200 can overpower this light, which it shouldn't have a problem with. I mean, I mean the sun is sort of going in and out, um, but it's not like super, super bright. So we're gonna stick it in the four foot octa and see how close we gotta get it at full power to sort of even out against the background.
Paul just told me that the battery on the 8600 Pro is dying, which gives me a chance. So, talk about weird coincidences. Just as I was talking about the battery in this getting low, the battery in the camera dies. So, I've swapped that over and uh, yeah, we'll worry about that in a minute because I got this really cool gadget that was sent to me and I was expecting to be entirely underwhelmed by this, but it's really, really good. This is a Novu power bank. Now, normally what I do when I come on location is I bring USB batteries with me to charge up camera batteries, my phones, my tablets, but this actually has a 240 volt socket on the front of it. And it does come in 120 volt flavor as well for American people. And there's, I think there's about five or six different plugs from around the world that they offer. They're about 85 pounds in the US or 85 dollars in, sorry, 85 pounds in the UK or about 85 dollars in the US. It's got the regular mains output a regular type A USB and a type C USB. And I haven't tested to see how much power can come out of the type C, but it had no problem charging up my Asus Zenfone 4s. Um, but now we're gonna see how quickly it charges up this battery for the AD600 Pro. Right, well with the 600 out of commission, we'll just go and play with a 200 for a while. Right, we're gonna go for a landscape shot, but the problem is, like even there, just trying to do a portrait shot and, and keep the softbox out of the shot was not easy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do another shot, landscape format with the camera a little further back. We're gonna put the camera on a tripod. We're gonna get two shots. We're gonna get one of Barry lit by the flash with Paul there in the shot. And then we're gonna take another one of just the environment and we're gonna paint Paul out after the fact. So we've got the D7000 set up down there on the Manfrotto Element Carbon Tripod. And we're gonna take one shot with them in place and then another shot without them. So one shot will be all lit by the AD200 in the four foot octa. Then they'll get out of the way and then we'll mask it out in post. We're waiting for the sun to come back. All right, I think the sun's well and truly sort of gone, which means we're not going to get a nice bright environment. So we're going to try some stuff in the woods. We're swapping because the white shirt's a bit bright. Let's see if we can refocus you. So it definitely looked better once we'd swapped Paul out for Barry with the darkest shirt. What? He's found cows. We're not going to go photograph the cows. First thoughts on the 200 because I, I put off getting a 200 for the longest time. I got my pair of 360 Mark IIs last year about two weeks after the 200 was announced. And the reason I went for the 360s is because they were on a huge, huge sale at Pixapro. So I bought two of them and it, and it was almost the same price as buying a pair of 200s, but I get nearly twice as much power. So that was why I went for the 360s. I also like that I can use the battery pack on speed lights with the 360s. And there's a little USB cable where you can use it to charge your phone and stuff up. You don't get that with a 200, but you get a much smaller light. You can swap it between the bare bulb and the Fresnel head. I haven't used the Fresnel head all that much because I generally tend not to use um, speed lights all that much, which is what the Fresnel head sort of supposed to look like. It's a speed light, but more powerful. Uh, but so far the bare bulb head's actually quite impressed me. It's, it's definitely not as powerful as the 360. It can just about overpower the sun in a four foot octa box if you're close enough. If you need to go wide with the softbox, your best bet is to get two shots. One with your subject and the flash in the shot, and then another one where they both run out and then you just mask it off in post like we did before. The recycle time's quicker than I expected to. It, it, it's not as fast as a 360, especially when you use the Y cable. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's fast enough for the pace that I shoot at. Now, the 600 Pro, that is really nice. I mean, when we were shooting out there at full power for the last shots with Paul, on the 200 we were a, a little over an eighth power and if we wanted to get it further away we could still go all you know up to quarter half or full power and still get all the power we needed with the four foot box further away so it wasn't in the shop the recycle time on it is ridiculous at 16th power we, we can fire the camera off at 10 frames a second and it'll fire every single time i don't need to shoot that fast that often 
certainly not for stuff like we've been shooting today. Usually I'll, I'll shoot fast like that when I've got someone like walking through a river or, or doing something where I think they're gonna fall and, uh, and I can actually get a, a whole sequence of them. But yeah, both lights have, you know, they've lived up to expectations. I mean, I've been using Godox now for like 18 months. I sold all my Nikon stuff, I sold all my Bowen stuff except my ring flash. Um, and made the switch to Godox and, and these are easily as good as I'd expect given how good my 360s have performed. But for now I think I think that's it because it looks like it's about to rain. I can hear some, did you hear thunder in the distance just then? Maybe it's a plane. Oh shit, those cows are moving quick. They look like small cows, calves, that's the one. Right, I think we're done for now because the rain looks like it's starting so we're gonna pack up and, uh, and go and escape it for a while. Um, plus we're getting eaten alive by bugs, which isn't fun. But yeah, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and pop a comment down below if you have any questions about the AD200, the AD600 Pro, uh, the X-Pro trigger, why it won't work on Sigma, Paul can answer those. Uh, and, uh, and I'll see you next time.